Finally, the last hurdle. The SpaceX Crew Dragon vehicle sat atop a Falcon 9 rocket on launch pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center. Along a causeway south of the launch site, a crowd gathered. I have wanted to do this for years, ever since I saw the man walk on the moon for the first time. This is an honor to be here. People wanted to be here to witness a defining moment for SpaceX and commercial space. This final test flight had been six years in the making. Two, one, zero. Ignition, lift off, center five, aim high, go Falcon, go Dragon. There were no astronauts on board for what was called an in-flight abort. This test was pivotal in proving the spacecraft's escape system could, during an emergency, pull Crew Dragon away to safety and protect astronauts inside. About a minute and a half into the flight, the Falcon 9's Merlin engines were intentionally shut down. Miko, Dragon launch escape initiated. Crew Dragon's abort engines began their firing sequence and the spacecraft pulled away from the Falcon 9 booster. As Dragon reached the highest point in its arc, the vehicle's trunk separated as planned. And there you just saw the trunk jettison again. Thrusters fired again, putting Dragon in the proper orientation for re-entry and parachute deployment. Great views coming off of the Dragon camera on the left. And we can also see the four parachutes from the airplane on the right. As all this was taking place, the Falcon 9 was, as planned, breaking up over the Atlantic Ocean. And Crew Dragon, beneath its four parachutes, fell slowly to a splashdown. After splashdown, and they'll be recovered too. And we are down. The entire test took about 12 minutes. We're highly confident the, the, the hardware will be ready in Q1, most likely end of February, but no later than March. And that uh, we think it, it, it appears probable that uh, the, the first crude launch would occur in the second quarter. The road getting here has been long, longer than anyone expected. In 2014, NASA awarded contracts to both SpaceX and Boeing to develop vehicles to fly astronauts to and from the International Space Station. A year later, SpaceX performed a successful pad abort, the first test of the Crew Dragon escape system. The company appeared on track to meet the target of flying astronauts by 2017. But neither SpaceX nor Boeing could make it. Last year, both companies flew uncrewed demonstration flights. Dragon made it to the International Space Station. Boeing's Starliner, because of a software glitch, did not, but landed successfully in New Mexico. It's unclear whether NASA will give Boeing the go-ahead to fly astronauts without another demonstration flight, but SpaceX is now on its way to flying its first crew as early as March. Private companies building vehicles to carry humans into space is, says planetary scientist Alan Stern, a game changer. The other big development, the really big development that's, that's sneaking up on us is the development of commercial spaceflight mm -hmm. uh, and uh, making what was once rare, humans to space, into something routine and lowering the cost dramatically through reusable rockets, for example, and reusable spacecraft. Uh, that, I think it won't be very long before private corporations are putting people out in the solar system for a whole variety of purposes. The first of which would be to free NASA from its dependence on Russia. Since the shuttle program ended, the only ride to the space station for U.S. astronauts has been on board Russian spacecraft. For NASA, nine years without a U.S. built spacecraft to carry astronauts is at last over. John Zarella, My Radar in Merritt Island, Florida. Follow My Radar on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.